Welcome to picturesque Field New Sydney, boasting magnificent Sydney Harbour, internationally renowned attractions, the world's best beaches, stunning World Heritage listed Blue Mountains and a circuit that has previously hosted MotoGP international competition, Sydney Motorsport Park. Thanks to Destination New South Wales and the New South Wales Government, this weekend we have 3.93 kilometres of technical floodlit fury that will challenge Australia's best riders as round two of the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance Australian Superbike Championships presented by Motul gets underway with the only night round of the 2024 season. Last time out at Phillip Island, it was the Mildura missile Josh Waters on the On Your Bike Ducati B4R for McMartin Racing with K-Tech that had the perfect weekend. Josh ticked all the boxes with pole position, three race wins and the championship lead. Waters' teammate Harry Voigt was second with the 2023 champion Troy Herfoss now on a Desmo Sport Ducati in third. Who will reign supreme in Sydney? Championship points coming into this round sees Josh Waters leading the championship with 64 and a half points, courtesy of the half points race three. Harry Voigt in second place and in third place is Troy Herfoss. Qualifying saw those three riders dominate the standings. All Ducati V4R mounted with Waters the only rider into the 28s with a 28.977. Voigt and Herfoss in second and third, separated by hundreds of a second. For this round's Ducati track preview, something completely different. Normally, we would go for a walk around the track. This time, we're going to unleash Steve Martin on the brand new Monster SP for a lap around the circuit. Chris, what should we be looking forward to here at Sydney Motorsport Park, a fantastic venue? Yeah, it's, it's a fantastic track, great venue. It's iconic in the fact that it used to hold the 500 Grand Prix races back in the day. I think Steve Martin might have even lined up in one of them. But um, tonight we're racing under lights. We've had practice in the daytime, so that changes, adds another element to it. So it'll be interesting to see what Steve thinks. Well, Steve, start your engines, let's go. with Ducati around this track, especially heading into this turn one. It's super fast and you've got to be super accurate. Getting on the apex on the inside there, hard on the gas. And I'll tell you what, this monster's not a race fight, but uh, it certainly feels like one. Plenty of torque. Down in the modal corner, off the brakes hard. You can see the lights on in the background. It's going to be dark later on, but it's not at the moment. Knee down on the ground. Use the torque of that bike out of that turn and into turn three here at uh, Sydney Motorsport Park. It's blind through here. Then you go up the hill, another blind crest, and then down. Super important at the bottom of this one to get the brakes nice and tight. Keep that uh, momentum through the corner and stay tight on the exit. I've seen people drift wide there. You don't want to do that. Then it's the run up the hill. And up the hill we go through Yamaha corner all the way out to the edge of the track. Another blind crest. And once again, it's difficult to know when to get on the brakes. Watch for overtaking into this one. It's super critical. It's tight through here. Then up you go, round the hill. This is one of my favourite parts of the track, the Yamaha Financial Services. You can see how blind it is as you head into there too. All the way around, keeping that throttle on. Twist the throttle to the stop before you can actually see where you're going. And then again, hard on the brakes into the famous turn nine. Got to be careful you don't high side out of this one. See how tight it is. It is super tight. Up the short, Michelin straight. Tucked in behind the screen we go. And then into the fast flip flop. Through the gearbox we go into the right hand corner here and then it's a quick flick over to the left. You know you've got this right if you drift all the way out and I tell you what, that feels super nice on this bike. Last corner, important to keep that roll speed up as we head out onto the main straight here at this Sydney Motorsport Park and I tell you what, this is a track that I really enjoy and I cannot wait to see the racing here tonight. Well, Steve, how was that? How was that? And tell us about the Ducati. I mean, it's just come off the showroom floor. What was it like? I can't believe how these things are nowadays. I mean, the amount of torque that this bike has, um, the amount of fun I had riding it, it's such a fun bike. Yeah, you're the lucky one. We had to stand here and watch you. <laughs> so. But also too, Steve, this track is also a great track to come and ride your road bike on as well, isn't it? 
Yeah, it certainly is. It's a great place to come for a ride. Um, there's such a, a variation of corners here. You're always on the edge of the tyre. Um, you need a, a bike that's got uh, good grip and good feel. Luckily for me, the Monster's got that. Well, been a fantastic Ducati track preview. Hope everyone enjoyed it. Let's get the racing underway. Riders are making their way around now through the final corner, Steve, before we get underway for the first race for the Alpine Stars Superbike category here at round two. Sydney Motorsport Park has turned on an absolute sensation. Josh Waters, Harry Boyd, and as we just saw, Troy Herfoss wheel off the grid. He will not take part in this race. Only two riders on the front row. The second row, Crew Halliday, Mike Jones and Brock Pearson, with Jones and Pearson clear space in front. Stauffer, Allerton and Dunker. What a row three that is with row four. That that's experience too. Brian starring Anthony West and Arthur Cece's. Paris Hardwick, Josh Sutherland now on board a Yamaha and Matt Walters on the Aprilia make up a very diverse foot row five. Then on row six, we've got Johnny Littress, Ty Lynch and Ryan Yanko, two young chargers from Supersport and an experienced superbike campaigner. Leanne Nelson back there on row seven on board bike number 52. Timmy Large, Declan Carberry and the field rounded out by the Michaels, Michael Edwards and Michael Kemp. Well, we're ready to go racing, Steve, for the Alpine Stars Superbike category. We saw last night nearly lap record pace set by the front runners in qualifying. Waters and Voigt will start from that front row of the grid. You can see the vacant position there. Troy Herfoss not taking part in this race. Due to a crash this morning, the team could not get the bike ready. The red flag has left the front of the grid, and we're ready to go. Superbikes on go. Great start once again from Josh Waters. Drew Halliday's got a good start for any front of his home. Caddies that lead them through turn one for the first time. Great start from Max Stouffer as well. He's up into third position. And he's had Brock Pearson flying from the second row of the grid up into third. Yeah, good start there by Pearson and Stouffer. They did exactly what they needed to do. Pearson had that clear gap and he made the most of it. Drew Halliday, good to see him up there too. Although he's not in that leading three or four, he'd be pretty happy to be sitting where he is. Well, Crew Halliday hasn't got a great start, but he hasn't got an absolute shocker either. And that's the good news for Crew Halliday. He's in a decent position. Was that Pearson having a, uh, a very ambitious bid for second place as they made their way down through turn five for the first time? It is Harry Point that leads. Look at Jones. Jones up the inside there. I'm sure he's just had a bit of a dive. Yeah, and Jones, he has. Jones up into fourth and place. And Halliday too. Halliday goes through. I think the rider that was just in front couldn't quite make out who that was. Was that uh, that was uh, Max Stouffer, I think it was, on board bike number 27. Was probably still in shock from the move from Jones and Halliday went straight through. But it is Voigt that leads from Waters and Pearson. So we've got three Ducatis at the front. Probably just not the three Ducatis that we thought. We thought that Herfoss would be in there. But his teammate stepped up to the plate and doing a great job on bike bike number 11. Big wide line by Crew Halliday there. He's got a good drive out of this one. Expect to see him get the slipstream down that straight behind the Ducatis and his teammate. The number 46. He can't do it though. So around through Sydney.com corner we go for the first time as we start lap two. It is still the three Ducatis that line abreast. Look at Pearson. Jones under considerable pressure from his teammate. And Jones and Halliday have closed right up at the back. Jones has gone wide. Halliday is through into fourth place now. Stouffer trying to take advantage of Jones running wide. Can't quite do it. But he's in a great position there on the back of the Yamaha factory men. Is the Penrite Yamaha rider. Where is his teammate Cameron Duncan? He's right on the back of Glenn Allerton, who's sitting there as well. We've got 1.8 seconds covering the top nine and more Australian championships that you can look at on the Ducati replay there. Look at Jones on the brakes. Runs wide fractionally. Halliday says thanks very much. Up the inside and Max Stouffer try to take advantage as well. I've got to say, Pearson's found some decent aggression. He has given it everything he's got out there. I mean, he is hanging in there. I didn't expect to see this, but he's dug deep. Good to see. Well, on the back end of Voigt's bike starting to move around there as he's back in second position now. Normal service has been resumed. Josh Waters on board bike number 21 has taken up the running at the front ahead of Harry Voigt. Brock Pearson Halliday is up into fourth place now. Jones right behind. Max Stouffer still sitting there. And behind Max Stouffer is Glenn Allerton. Then it's Cameron Dunker and Brian Starring. They're just on two seconds covering that lead group of nine riders. Steve, try and count the amount of Australian Superbike Championships alone in that category. You will not be able to count the amount of Australian Championships in total. We haven't got enough pen and paper. And
And on top of that, there's some decent youth in there too. Good job, Harry Boyd. Matt Stauffer, Cam Duncan. The future of our sport is here. Brock Pearson as well, Steve. He's only a young man still, but he's doing a great job to try and hold off the man from uh, South West Sydney, Crew Holiday. This is his home track. It's his backyard. He goes up the inside of Pearson. Pearson was a foot off line, and Halliday was on a perfect line through Motel Corner Turn 2 and said, thank you very much. I'm going to now set sail and try and catch up to the Ducati riders that lead this field. Well, Halliday knows his way around this track inside out. He really does. He's, it's a track that suits his style, and that start was fantastic for him. He's put himself in a good position now. You can see the Ducati riders in front, and uh, you know what? He's right on their tail at the moment. A small gap starting to appear there between Glenn Allerton and uh, Max Stouffer, and up the inside of Allerton, trying desperately as they came into turn six. Oh, we've oh, got we've, a red flag. Oh, we've got a red flag there. So, red flag is out after only two completed laps. Matt Walters has crashed at turn one, unfortunately, on the Aprilia. Right, well, let's um, hope that uh, he's OK and they can sort that out. Um, unfortunately for him, but... Uh, so the riders will be making their way back yep. to the, uh, the grid, Steve. You can see them there all looking at each other as uh, Crew Hudday was on a charge. He made his way up into uh, fourth position. Then he made a, uh, a bid for third at turn two, which was successful. And he set sail for the uh, the two lead Ducatis, but unfortunately, a red flag has come out and uh, stopped that charge. Plenty more action coming up here. The Alpine Star Superbike restart up shortly. Well, we're back and ready to go racing for the Alpine Star Superbike category, a restart of Alpine Star Superbike race number one here at Sydney Motorsport Park. It is round two of the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance Australian Superbike Championships presented by Motul. And we're getting ready to go racing for our one and only race in the daytime light here at Sydney because race two will be held under lights later on this evening. The riders just making their way down to the grid now. Harry Voigt in position number two, one of the last riders there. Troy Herfoss still not on the grid. Didn't take part in the first start, so unable to take part in the restart as well. We're ready to go racing for the Alpine Star Superbike. Restart of race one. Superbikes are go. Great start once again from Josh Waters. Crew Holiday's got a good start, it looks like, as well. Good start from the third row of the grid. Is that Max Stofer with the yellow helmet on the Penrite Yamaha going around the outside as well? Max is absolutely oh. flying. He's nearly high-sided himself out of the seat, but he's managed to stay on the track. I'm not sure how he did that. And it is uh, the two Ducatis with the two factory Yamahas, Halliday and Jones, back there in third and fourth place. And that is a win for Crew Halliday because that's the best start he's had in about two years when he needed to do it. Great start by Halliday and Jones right behind him. But it is the number 21, Josh Waters, right out in front. And we've got, uh, looks like uh, Paul Lincolnback's gone down the number 60 machine. So Field makes their way through turn four. You can see Leanne Nelson there on board bike number 52, well and truly in that uh, pack as well, battling for position on this first lap. But it is Waters, Voigt, then Halliday, Jones. Right up back there in fifth position is Stouffer after that uh, near high side through turn one of the first lap. Pearson's got off to a pretty good start as well, but he's back to position number six. Dunker in seventh, Allerton in eighth, Starring in ninth, and Ant West rounds out your top ten as we come to the final sector of this la first lap. Yeah, good job there by Waters doing exactly what he needed to do um, to get that whole shot again. He's so good on the start, isn't he? And this time he managed to hold it. In the previous start, uh, his teammate got past him, but uh, Waters doing what he needs to do. Those uh, nerves are gone, and he's already got a little bit of a gap. Here's one for you, Steve Martin. Uh, Arthur Cece's has got a shocking start. He's down in third. He's in two He's got a great start. He's in third. The planets, the planets are on a line, Steve. This is not what we're normally used to seeing as Crew Holiday tips into a Sydney Com corner with a massive head of steam after his first flying run down the start finish straight here at Sydney Motorsport Park. And he's opened up a small gap between himself and his teammate as Brock Pearson looks to try and get the Desmo Sport Ducati up the inside of Max Stouffer's Penrite Yamaha. No can do. No, Stouffer's uh, riding much better this time. If you think back, he was uh, falling back through the pack, but he didn't get beaten up this time. He's managed to hold his own. Pearson, on the other hand, who was on a charge, seems to be in a stable position at the moment. I think he's struggling a little bit with rear grip. You can just see the rear sliding already on Pearson's bike. So let's hope that that's um, part of the setup. 
plant and not uh, already a tyre spinning. I'm not sure if it's an optical illusion because of Brock's very lanky frame, but it looks, yeah, watch like, here. Watch looks like he's here. trying to stand the bike up into the middle of the tyre, whereas Duncan behind him is more than happy to get on the throttle of the Penrite Yamaha when the bike is well and truly on its side. Oh, big moment there from Voigt on the way out of the Michelin corner. That's going to thwart his drive up the back straight as well. Halliday and maybe even Jones as well. Jones has done a cracking lap on this one, Steve, to pull himself right up onto the back of Halliday. He was three or four bike lengths behind at least as they went through turn two at the start of this lap. And he's now almost camped on the ducktail of Halliday's 65 machine as they make their way down the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance start finish straight to complete the first flying lap. Let's have a look at the lap times. A 29.5 for Josh Waters, a 29.4 for Prue Halliday, fastest man on the first lap. That's incredible lap times. I mean, that is pretty much almost right down on their qualifying lap times. When you consider they've got enough fuel to do 10 laps in these bikes and they're doing that sort of uh, pace, uh, Waters is pushing the limits. So Max Stouffer and Cameron Dunker have uh, been overtaken by the flying Desmo Sport. Ducati Pearson is now up into position number five, but he's got a bit of a gap between himself and Jones. In fact, it's about... Uh, 1.2 seconds between Pearson. Can he drag the two Penrite Yamahas forward and try and get onto the back of Jones' machine? Then there's a little bit of a gap back. Let's have a look at the Ducati replay now. I bet this is Voigt's moment at the uh, the exit of the hairpin. Just look at it here. He tries to get on the gas. The back end just steps out momentarily. We're coming to the end of the lap now. This is the end of lap four on our 10-lap journey. So we're getting towards half race distance. It is Waters on 21 that leads. The margin as they come across the line to complete this fourth lap is 0.3 of a second. So Voigt has managed to take two tenths of a second back on that lap. A 29.7 for Waters, a 29.5 for Voigt. Halliday at 29.6 and Jones at 29.9. The top four all in the 29s. Well, you just know that those two guys in second and third, Voigt and Halliday, they're just not going to give up, are they? They're going to keep on digging away at uh, Waters. Uh, so he has definitely got the pressure on. He will see as he goes past um, his pit board that uh, that gap has come down a little bit too so that will put more stress on him look at brian starring now closing in on the back of max stofer who has dropped back to seventh position i think they must have made a mistake because cameron dunk is up into sixth and he's trying to go with brock pearson in fact i think he was looking for an ambitious overtake there on the way down in towards turn six you can see he's got a lot of confidence in the front end of that uh, penwright yamaha as they make their way round the back of uh, Corporate Hill now. And Halliday, you can see on that last lap, Jones was 0.3 of a second, not much slower than Halliday, but it's now really starting to tell on track. Halliday is camped on the back of Harry Voigt's machine, and Jones has dropped off just slightly, while these two groups of two really go to battle. Dunker increasingly desperate now to try and find his way pa past Pearson. I'm guessing as they're coming to the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance start finish straight that that's not going to be any chance now because Pearson has got the power of that V4 underneath him. Yeah, Dunker though, I tell you what, I think he's got pace. I really do think he's got a little bit of extra pace, uh, including uh, Pearson in front of him. He's caught him up, but it's very, very difficult to pass around here. So he's going to have to try and hold it on through the sydney.com corner and maybe try and outbreak the maneuver here into modal. Well, the fight was very, very shallow into uh, turn two. They're taking a real narrow line. Trying to uh, hold out a hard-breaking crew, Halliday. Absolutely. The reason he's done that is he doesn't want to see uh, Halliday go up the inside. So he's just dumped it in there and left him with nowhere to go. Halliday's got to be looking for a way through. Halliday can sniff a victory here. Look at that. He's quicker there. Well, he's much quicker through that uh, quick change of direction too, between four and five. Up the hill we go. There is only uh, 0.5 of a second now covering the top three. So out of uh, turn six we go around the back of Corporate Hill. This is where the uh, people in the grandstand here at Sydney Motorsport Park can't see what's happening. They reappeared back into the view of the people in the grandstand and they will notice now that Jones has just dropped off the uh, the lead pack that is now three riders with Waters leading from Voigt. Crew Halliday back there in third position. Jones in fourth. Brock Pearson is still circulating around in fifth, but they've lost a little bit of distance to this lead group. Dunker in sixth. Starring is still holding down seventh. Max Stouffer has dropped back to eighth now. Ant West in ninth and Glenn Allerton rounds out your top ten. Great mid-corner speed there by Halliday. He's trying everything he can to get in the slipstream of the Duke. He's there, but it's nothing he can do about it. Uh, Duke just pulls away slightly down the straight. A little bit of uh, more top-end mumbo there. Halliday's got to make it up into Sydney.com corner. 
And then maybe, maybe if he can line up on the inside there, he can't do it because Voigt is so strong on the brakes there. Tell you what, Halliday looks a lot smoother through turn one. I'm just wondering if down on the pit wall there, Chris Vermeulen, you can actually see that from your vantage position. I was just talking to the Yamaha guys and uh, Brent Stevens in particular, who's crew chief for Crew Halliday, he's just saying that he's straight to the first part of the track. He's really strong in T1 and, the, and like Steve said, the bike changes direction really good. So if he's going to make a move, it's got to be early in the lap because he does lose out on that Ducati horsepower a little bit down the straight. So that's going to be interesting. But he's from true. a weather point of view, guys, there is a there is a tailwind and it looks like it is getting a bit stronger here and the clouds are coming in. So I wonder if that's going to affect things as well. Well, the good news for Brent Stevens is as he comes back into the view of the uh, people at pit lane, Crew Halliday has made a move around the back of the mountain and he's back up into second position and Jones is there as well. Here is a Ducati replay now of that manoeuvre on the exit of turn five. That was the change of direction that we spoke about on the previous lap, Steve. Look at the drive out of the corner. Crew Halliday is on a mission now. He set sail for the lead and he's down, chasing down Josh Waters. Josh Waters is probably going to get the pit board now and he's going to be a bit worried because he knows that Crew Halliday has got pace here at Sydney Motorsport Park. He's definitely got the mid-corner speed. What a brilliant move that was by Halliday. He will be hoping that that, uh, the number 29 of Harrison Boyd doesn't slipstream past him, and he doesn't. Halliday holds that second position. Now he's got work to do. He does not want to finish second. This is a massive opportunity to take victory here for Halliday. It's been a while since he's had one. Yep, it was uh, round six last year at Phillip Island, uh, race number two, I think it was, Steve, where Crew Halliday took his first victory for a, uh, well, a distance that was in thousands of days. He doesn't want to be going that long again before his next victory, and he's getting that front wheel uh, elevated as he comes across the hump and down in towards turn four. The local man, the New South Welshman, has gone destination P1. That's where he wants to go. And he's set sail now and he's trying to catch up. The gap uh, as they came across the line and went through sector number one was half a second. What has Halliday been able to do in this first sector of the circuit, which is his best, around the back of the circuit where we know the Yamaha turns and handles so well as they come to the end of sector two and out back into our view for all of the people here. It is as uh, they come down towards turn nine and finish off that sector. You can see the gap is physically closed down. The timing monitor says, as they come across the line, 0.3 of a second, Steve. He's taken two tenths out round the back of the circuit. We're on lap eight. So Crew Halliday is going to have to make a manoeuvre pretty soon because look behind him. Here is Harry Voigt. He's closing in as well. We're going to have a three-bike battle for this race win. Well, you know that Voigt's never going to give up. It's not in his DNA. He's uh, going to give it everything he's got. He's a, he's a fighter. He's a scrapper. But uh, I'll tell you what, Crew... Ooh. Will, he'll want this so much. The man leading at the moment, Waters, he's, in a way, he's just got to consolidate. If he can win it, he can win it. But, uh, you know, Water, Waters just needs to stay where he is and try and not do anything silly. And that's what he's good at doing. Well, on the last lap, the fastest rider on track was Harry Voigt in third position of 29.551. Only one-tenth of a second faster. Halliday on a 29.6. Waters was a 30.0. So we're on lap nine, one and a half laps to go here at Sydney Motorsport Park. There is a great battle between Cameron Dunker on bike number three, Brock Pearson on bike number 11, and uh, three-time Australian champion uh, Brian Starring on the Moto Go Yamaha back there uh, right behind them. That is a battle for uh, fifth, sixth and seventh position with Max Stouffer in eighth and Ant West in ninth, Glenn Allison rounding out that top ten. Yeah, good battle with those guys there. Starring making his way up through the pack. If he had got a better Halliday. start, who knows? And Halliday's in the lead. Halliday leads them through the hairpin as we come round to get the last lap board. Not sure where that overtake took place, but Halliday does not care. He's now... Well, he's just put his head down, Steve. I'm surprised that... Uh, Josh Waters has dropped off that little bit down the back straight. That's exactly where you thought the Ducatis would have been strong. But it's going to be about drive out of here because they He's... need a good drive out here. We know that Yamaha's fast. We saw that at the last round at Phillip Island. And Halliday gets his backside back up onto the tail to try and get maximum aerodynamic efficiency as he comes across the line. Gets the last lap board. Nine laps down. One lap to go. 3.93 kilometres for Crew Halliday to hang on. Waters and Voigt are desperate to try and get past. Come on, Crew. You can do this. It's a big one. Voigt up the inside. Oh, can't quite do it there. Halliday runs wide. Manages to pull it back. He's going to get the tight line on the exit of turn two as they come out of Motul now and through turn three. He needs to drive out of here to try and stop an assault from Waters at the bottom of the hill at turn four. We know Halliday is good from turn four to turn five. He's just got to be clean through here for Halliday and get the drive up the back of the hill. Through turn five he goes now. 
Yeah, that he's... looks like a pretty good drive out of there, Steve. He's got the good line, and the bike is not moving around at all. No, this is his part of the track. He is so good there. You can see he's pulled out a couple of legs. Waters with the wheel in the air now. Harry Boyd, you know he's going to have a dive down into turn nine. Up the inside, Waters looks. He can't do it there. Voigt Waters is under a lot of pressure, but it is this man here. Look at the slide on the back of that Yamaha there as he tips it in to uh, the uh, Honda corner there for the final time and gets a great drive out. Well, the one thing is that Jones is right in the equation as well. Those uh, Ducatis cannot afford to make one foul move as they come through the final corners. Otherwise, it will be Jones up onto the podium as well. But it is Crew Holiday with a couple of bike links lead as they come through Dunlop for the final time. He will come out onto the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance start finish straight and he will go for the line he's got his backside up onto the tail he's trying to get maximum efficiency and he's going to do it he's going to do it once again crew holiday he will take the win a 130.121 on the final lap he was the fastest man on track on the last lap and he took the victory in the end by half a second over josh waters and harry boyd mike jones only just off the podium but crew holiday congratulations you won't be able to hold back the emotion as crew makes his way down to uh the podium to speak to uh, Chris Vermeulen at the end of that race and what a race it was for the first of our Alpine Stars Superbike races here at round two. Crew Halliday taking the win by 0.526 of a second over the dominant Josh Waters from round one on board the McMartin Racing with K-Tech Machine. Harry Voigt in third on the sister machine. Mike Jones, he was well and truly back in the mix at the end there in fourth. Dunker, absolute sensation again in fifth position. Brock Pearson in sixth. Brian Starring in seventh. Ed West in eighth. Another great ride from West Max Stouffer in ninth, and Glenn Allerton rounds out that top ten. Yeah, what a ride from these guys. That was incredible stuff. Crew Halliday, he has got to be an emotional wreck right now. We have just seen an absolute Sydney sensation, Steve Martin, as, uh, well, Crew Halliday took his first victory for the year for the Yamaha Racing Team. His teammate, Mike Jones, was well and truly in the mix as well. But our top three, they've made their way back to the podium. They're with Christopher Mullen. Yeah, thank you very much. Third place, Harrison Voigt, another podium in Australian Superbike Championship. You must be pretty happy. Thanks, Chris. And uh, yeah, I'm actually not so happy. Um, yeah, when I Josh passed me, I, I felt quite comfortable. And to be honest, I just honestly try to stay behind him and yeah, trying to attack the last few laps. But crew caught up to us pretty fast. Um, in the end, Josh and I were both struggling for the group. It was very obvious with how Josh was riding and obviously how I was feeling too. So, um, yeah, we'll have a debrief and try and tidy some stuff up for the last race. Well, another one under lights. Good luck tonight. Thank you. There you go. That's our third place, man. Second place and still leader of the championship, Josh Waters. Pole position, but um, not the race result you're looking for. No, it was really close. At least I didn't get beaten by much. So <laughs> um, I knew it was going to be hard. Everyone had said, oh, you've got it, you've got it. But I knew. So I need to go back, work away uh, and hopefully come out in this next one stronger. And what about tonight? Any changes under lights or tyre-wise? Will it be better for you or harder? Oh, it was more grip last night under lights, so yeah, it's different. It'll be exciting to watch and um, I'm sure it'll be another great race. Well, good luck for that one. Congratulations there. It's our second place man and our winner. First time winner in a very long time. I'm really happy to say this. Crew Halliday, congratulations. Not that long, Chris. I won like <laughs> two race meetings ago, but uh, yeah. <laughs> You know, it's good to do it here uh, at Sydney at my home ground and, you know, thank everyone, my friends, family, even co-workers coming out to watch me. Uh, uh, I don't know even how to explain that. I, I had the shit so bad after that red flag because I finally got the third. I was like, all right, these are the two I was in, need to beat and unfortunately Troy's bike, something happened there, so it's, it sucks for him. But, uh, yeah, I, I knew when that red flag, I was like, I've got to get the start this time. So I got the start and I, I seen him gap me. I'm like, oh, not again. I can't have this. I can't have this. And I just thought back to last year. I knew I caught him at the end, Josh, at the end of last year, and it happened again. So I think we got really good tyre wear. He, where, I find where Josh is really strong at the start of the race, so I become stronger at the end. So it's it's sort of a bit of a yo-yo effect. And yeah, I got in front of him, and I was seeing the last lap board, and I was like, oh, thank God. And then I just knew that last lap had to be like kind of like a, a qualifier, and I was like, don't mess up, don't mess up. But you know, the, the, the bike the bike's working like unreal. Had that bit of a crash on uh, yesterday, sort of hindered me a little bit, but. Back on top step and God, it feels good. So good to see. You. Congratulations and good luck tonight. Thanks, guys. Well, they're heading off now on the warm up lap, Steve. You're back from the grid. How are the weather conditions out there? Because we just saw a very entertaining Super Sport 300 race. If there was any rain, they certainly would have wiped it all off the track with lots of creative lines.
Yeah, look, it's it's not too bad out there. I mean, from here you look at it and it uh, it seems heavier than it really is. The track's still completely dry at the moment. Uh, all the riders are nervous. They're nervous as because no one likes to see this. I mean, look at that there, uh, Cam Dunker. Uh, I interviewed him on the grid and he said, "How is it? Is it dry everywhere?" At that point, you just need to say. I mean, you can see the riders there now um, slowing down for sure. So. Even though that green flag's out, they are that rain is starting to look a little bit heavier. It's funny, the grandstand here is not one of the favourite places to uh, to watch the racing. And that racing will get underway with Josh Waters, Harry Voigt and Troy Herfoss. Was he out there on the grid, Steve Martin? I didn't see him. Which should start out of row number one. No, absolutely. It'd be interesting to see what he does do out there. Um, Crew Halliday, Mike Jones and Brock Pearson are out there. That's for sure. I saw them. As is Max Stauffer, Glenn Allerton and Cam Dunker. We know that for sure from row three. And we know how good Cam Dunker is from row three. But well, we also know that Brian Starring's out there because you spoke to him along with Ant West and Arthur Cece's. Let's hope that Arthur can get one of his traditional lightning starts. Paris Hardwick, Josh Sutherland and Matt, Matt Walters won't be out there on the grid. He's unfortunately uh, suffered some injuries in his crash in race number one on row five. Row six, John Littras, Ty Lynch had a great superbike debut and Ryan Yanko, the Queenslander. Leanne Nelson had a technical problem in race number one. That's all fixed. She'll be out there along with Tim Large and Declan Carberry on row seven and Michael Edwards and Michael Kemp the veterans round out row eight. You can see the uh, the officials there just having a word to uh, to Josh Waters after that warm up lap. Yeah, look at the look at the water on the screens there. They're all having a bit of a discussion about it now. Yep, there is Herfoss, and look at Herfoss. He's pumped up. He goes, yep, I'm ready to go. Yeah, I, I've ridden today yet. Let me have a go. Well, if anyone's going to be uh, going in, into, uh, like, full race mode now, it will be Troy Herfoss. As you mentioned, he hasn't ridden today, or hasn't raced today. He's pumped up and ready to go. Look at everybody else. A pumped up Troy Herfoss is very dangerous. As we get ready to go racing, Alpine Star Superbike race two. Superbikes are go. Great start from the front row of the grid. Halliday's got another cracking start. Look and he's that. trying to go for the lead as they make their way through Sydney.com corner. He's got his foot down Supermoto style. Crew Halliday's no stranger to that as they make their way through the very fast turn one for the first time. And it's uh, Harry Voigt that leads them. Brock Pearson in second. Mike Jones in third. Oh, he's, got, he's run off. Voigt's gone wide. There's a few of them gone wide. Mike Jones has gone wide as well. They're all wide there. Definitely not the grip that we've had in the past. But it is Brock Pearson that leads the way. And uh, there's a few hands up now. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people just cruising around, just putting their hands up. Red flag has come out. So I imagine there will be a, uh, a very short delay here. Race direction will have a look at the conditions and uh, make a very speedy decision on uh, how we proceed well, with this one. Yeah, it'll, it'll definitely be like a, a, a declared a wet race at this point. Um, and what that means is that the riders will have a chance to change tyres and put those uh, wet weather tyres on that we talked about if they want or they can stay with the sleep. Yeah, there's Brock's dad. Um, he's getting in there. Looks like they need, he needs a bit of help to get to the, his work done as well. You can just see that coming down a little bit heavier now. Um, other things that they'll be doing to these bikes is the uh, the maps. Obviously, all of these bikes are fuel injected, so they'll be softening the, the power delivery of the map. They'll be they work on a thing called a torque map, which means that they can actually make it uh, more like a, not like a 125, but if it's a 1,000 cc, more like a 750 or a 600 to ride. Take out all that uh, brute force and power that you need in the, in the um, dry to drive down the straight. So they'll be doing stuff like that. Traction control is another aspect that they'll look at. They'll increase the traction control. And these are all things that these riders can do. Um, on the handlebars nowadays. They've got a switch um, which will say add traction control, um, minus traction control, braking um, assist, all sorts of different things. And you can see how, you know, when they've got just such a short period of time to do this, um, you know, there's tools and stuff everywhere. You can see the fork springs on the top there of that um, tool chest. Um, that would be the spring that they would put in in an ideal world if they had enough time. But to me, uh, risky to do that now. Well, plenty of work going on here at Sydney Motorsport Park. We'll be back with the exciting start for Superbike race number two after this short break. And welcome back to Sydney Motorsport Park and Phil New Sydney. And unfortunately, we've got a bit of rain falling here. But Steve, the good news is that all of the riders have come back to the pits after that uh, aborted start of Alpine Stars Superbike race number two. And they've put on their wet weather tyres or made a decision to run with slicks if that's what they want to do. 
Well, Harry Voigt pulling up uh, on bike number 29. He'll be making sure he doesn't do anything uh, silly, especially considering he's on a plane over to Spain, I think, uh, during this uh, coming week. Is that uh, Herfoss is out there, so he must have started from pit lane on the uh, the siding lap. Good to see number one out there on the grid. He could be a danger as well. As we get ready to go racing. Superbikes are go. Good start from Herfoss. Look at him go already. Look at Drew Halliday go as well as they make their way down towards Sydney.com corner for the first time around the outside. It looked like a couple of riders coming through there. Was that Max Stouffer or Cameron Dunker on board the Penrite Yamaha taking a wide line as they make their way down to uh, turn two, the modal corner. And it's Herfoss. He's he, is, uh, he is full of confidence. Look at him go. He's already charged into turn two and he's trying to pin the, uh, well, pin the rest of the field to the wall while he tries to I get away early on in this race. Well, he's already had some wet weather experience this year. In the, oh, oh, big Pearson. moment there. Did you see that? Was that uh, Brock Pearson? It yeah, is. it was uh, on board bike number 11. So is this the Desmo Sport Ducati's 1 2? It is the McMartin racing with K Tech machines in positions 3 and 4. Where is Ant West? He's up to 7th already. And uh, look for bike number 13, the addicted to track machine starting to make its way forward. There's Glenn Allison, another one to keep your eye on as well. Yeah. On board the GT Racing M1000RR. Yeah, I've decided there's too many wet weather experts out there to pick a clear winner isn't there because they're all good in their own way in the wet and, and uh, different periods but um, the man who has ridden in the wet this year I know for sure is uh, the leader of the race Troy Herfoss look at uh, Brock Pearson he's doing a great job out there Herfoss rode in America in the wet on one of the baggers that he rides over in that championship over there and um they couldn't believe that he wanted to go out in the wet. Well, they couldn't believe that he wanted to go out, and they couldn't believe how fast he was in the wet. I think uh, his dad was telling me he was eight seconds faster than anybody else out on track, and the only reason a couple of the other riders went out there was because Troy was out there and looked like to be having uh, a great amount of fun. <laughs> as we look back through the field, is that Paris Hardwick there involved in a uh, pretty tight battle? But uh, coming round to uh, complete the first lap, it is definitely Herfoss and Pearson that lead as they come down to uh, complete that first lap. Waters is going with them as well. Yamahas are struggling, aren't they? Um, there's uh, Crew Halliday. He's definitely dropped back. Where's Mike Jones? He's behind him. Well, Arthur Cece's looks like he's got a little bit better start, but he's... Uh in a pretty big bunch of riders at the moment. And the other thing to consider too, Steve, is the amount of spray that's going to be putting up by these uh, wet weather tyres. They do have a, a massive water displacement factor. So you get behind someone and there is a, not only for the spray coming up from them in front, but also the amount of water that's being put up by those tyres and then coming off the back of the bike. As Pearson has a look over the shoulder and uh, he can see bike number 21 closing in from behind. I'll tell you what, I think Pearson's feeling pretty good out there. The advantage that he's got is he's tall. Look at his legs he can get his knee on the ground without the same lean angle as the other bikes that gives him an extra bit of um strength like, like a third field. wheel it's it, like a sidecar it's going to be a lot more oh herfoss herfoss has gone down that go. is the entry into turn six uh, after pirelli and there is a bump right there on the way into the corner probably not a massive concern in the dry steve but it looks like it's just unloaded the suspension and unfortunately herfoss has gone down so uh his race weekend has not uh, involved a lot of racing laps waters up the inside Runs Pearson a little bit wide as they come down into the hairpin and then make their way out past Michelin and up the uh, the back straight. Now, this is going to be interesting to see. And look at Pearson. He dives back past Waters. That was just drive out of the corner, wasn't it? Uh, great grip there from the, uh, the Desmo Sport Ducati rider on board bike number 11. They've opened up a pretty handy gap over the rest of the field. Where's the rest of the field? They're, they're two corners ahead, Steve. Well, they've left them for dead. They're four seconds a lap quicker. Brock Pearson's fastest man on track at the moment with a 50.7. Um, he's four seconds quicker than Glenn Allen back in fourth position. Well, Waters got the drive out of the final corner, and as they go through Sydney.com corner, it is Waters that leads over Pearson. You can see there completely different riding styles of Brock Pearson and uh, Josh Waters. Well, they're the same bike, but that's where the similarities really end. Uh, two different teams, and we can see a Ducati oh, replay here of yeah. uh, Troy Herfoss. He hit the bump. Got hit the bump, touched the brakes, and that was it uh, all over for uh, the reigning champion, Troy Herfoss. Yeah, he was like about, um, I don't know, four centimetres too far to the right. Big bump there, and bang, down he went. 42-7 now, fastest lap, Josh Waters. 
Brock Pearson, 43.5. He's 1.3 seconds off. Max actually just said his fastest lap of the race. Remember only a lap or so yeah. ago, Steve, he called it that he set the fastest lap of the race. So uh, he's continuing to improve, but so is Josh Waters just getting into his rhythm now. And Harry Voigt is also starting to close in on the back of uh, Glenn Allerton on board that uh, GT Racing MacArthur BMW M1000RR. Remember that Harry Voigt's never ridden on this bike in the wet. He's never ridden on these Pirelli tyres in the wet. So it's, uh, you know, it's taken him a little while to adapt to it, but uh, he's learning, isn't he? He, he's, he was dropping back at the start. Now he's going, yep, OK, I'm starting to get it. Now he's challenging our... On to the stage now where nothing Harry Voigt surprises me at all, Steve, along with Cameron Dunker, because uh, these two have just amazed me since, uh, since I first watched them jump onto these uh, big bikes. Remember that Voigt is going back overseas to race in Europe on board a 600cc machine in the Junior World Championships where he's racing Moto3 uh, Moto or Moto2 bikes. And uh, Cameron Dunker, well, he's staying here for the whole year, but I'm pretty sure it's not going to be long before a team from overseas sees what uh, mastery skills that he has and uh, picks him up and tries to uh, get him into some World Championship event as well. Yeah, absolutely. Just picks it up, puts it on the meat of the tide blast down the straight. That BMW of Glenn Allerton's is pretty quick too, but Harry Voigt in the slipstream, straight past. But how was the drive of both of them? The bikes weren't moving around at all. Those teams have done a miraculous job in getting those uh, changes made to the bikes to uh, quickly adapt to these conditions. And uh, the riders are doing a sensational job to, uh, to well, just get the bikes around there in such a brilliant pace. They're all in the 43s in oh, the top four. Arthur's wide. Well, he looks like he might come back and maintain it, but he hasn't lost a position. He's just lost a little bit of track position. So uh, just remember that uh, Arthur is just ahead of the uh, the factory rider crew, Halliday, and he's also got the Moto Go Yamaha, the privateer machine, the other team run by Patrick Lee from Victoria. Well, look at Starring around the outside on that Moto Go bike, looking to try and find a way past crew Halliday. Yeah, he, he looked like he was trying to think about stuffing it up the inside there, but I'll tell you what, and he's, he's still on the gas on the inside there. It's always hard when you've got someone like Crew Halliday, factory Yamaha guy in front who's like up there in the championship. The last thing that Prime wants to do is do something silly and, and uh, destroy his uh, chances. So uh, Brian being extra careful there. Yep, that trio of R1s are going to uh, fight for that all the way to the flag, I think, because we're on lap seven now of uh, the 10 lap uh, shortened race distance. Brian Starring tries to get the title line and get a good drive out of there. He's done that successfully. Even in the wet tyres, he's managing to carry the front wheel halfway up that Michelin straight towards uh, the turn 10, 11, 12 area that finishes off a lap here at Sydney Motorsport Park. That's where it would feel a bit sketchy through that part of the track, I imagine, in the wet, uh, Steve. But look at the lean angles that they're getting. They've got their knees on the deck now as they make their way out through Yamaha Revs Your Heart Corner and onto the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance start finish straight. Arthur gets his head right down behind the screen. Yeah, Crew Halliday utilises the slipstream, but uh, Arthur's too late on the brakes into turn one. Yeah, good job there by Arthur. 98% of these guys are on, on the Pirelli wet tyres um, out there for sure. That's just the, the tyre of choice it seems to be at the moment, although the teams do have options to run other brands. So I've just got to say that, uh, you know, the Pirelli tyres uh, come a long way with their wet weather development. You've got all these riders out there with for now, just had that one off, and I believe that was because Herfoss hit a big bump on the outside of the circuit, which didn't help him out. So the current lead for Josh Waters over Brock Pearson is 2.3 seconds. Pearson in second, Max Stofer holding down third. He's got a four-second lead over Harry Voigt on board bike number 29 in fourth. Then it's Glenn Allerton in fifth. He's uh, well, closing in not, not too far away from the back end of uh, Void Alley, 0.6 of a second. Then we've got the very close trio of Arthur CC's crew, Halliday and Brian Starring. Cameron Dunker not too far behind. You can just see him in the back of the shot there, Steve, on board the, uh, the Penrite Yamaha. And, uh, well, there's the future, catching up to a couple of legends of the sport in uh, Glenn Allerton, Brian Starring, and uh, Arthur Cece is another young man that, when he scores a podium, it, uh, it, well, I think it's going to be very, very soon. It won't be a big surprise because he's been knocking on the door so uh, so many times over the last couple of years. Well, I tell you what, when you look at the second, third and fourth spot, you've got uh, young Brock Pearson, young Max Stauffer and young Harry Voigt. Brilliant stuff. Let's head down to Chris. Yeah, thanks very much, guys. It's, uh, it is interesting what, what you're saying, but I just wanted to point out that it is raining heavier than it has done. So there, there's all different levels of wet, as you know, Steve, and there's getting a lot more spray and there's probably going to be a lot more standing water. So the race does change 
when there's more water out there. It doesn't mean the guy that was fastest when it was just, just damp. So that may change a little bit. A lot of the bikes as well, just talking to a lot of the teams, have only got one bike out there and they weren't able to make full wet changes. So some of them got front springs done, but not rears. So these bikes will be very tricky to ride at the moment. Well, you can see Corelladay there. He had the front uh, or the foot out as he came down into uh, motor corner turn two. There is uh, Harry Voigt holding down fourth. This group is starting to uh, tighten up immensely now as they come out of uh, turn three and head over the hill and down into Ducati Corner. It is Allerton. Then we've got uh, Crew Halliday after CC's Brian Starring and Cameron Dunker starting to close in from behind. And uh, they're all starting to close up onto the back of Harry Voigt in fourth position as well. I can't believe how consistent some of those guys are. I mean, look, Waters, fast as Oh, we got one oh, down there. That's Allerton. And he's gone down. Same, same thing. Same place as Herfoss. Yeah. And probably the same bump that caused uh, Herfoss to crash as well. Looks like Allerton might have uh, bumped his elbow on the ground there as well. So that's one rider out of that equation. That moves uh, Crew Halliday up into a fifth position now. Uh, vital for the championship for Crew. Crew's on um, salvation at the moment. Let's have a look on the Ducati replay. He's gone out there. He didn't hit the bump. He just went in there too hard, tried to tip it in, had too much front brake on and just folded the front. And then he's gone over backwards on the kerb with his elbow and that's um, given it a bit of a tweak. So let's hope that he's okay with that. Starring now all over the back of CC's as well as Josh oh. Waters has come across the line to uh, get the last lap board. Nine laps down for our race leader. The lap times have come back about two seconds, Steve, or one and a half seconds from the, uh, the fastest lap of the race. So that uh, backs up what Chris was saying about the amount of water on the track is starting to, uh, to increase. A 144.1 uh, for both Waters and Pearson on that lap. The, uh, the gap is staggered at 2.7 seconds for Josh Waters. And he's got uh, one 3.39 kilometre lap to go. There he is across the top of the hill and down into a Motorcycling Australia. Turn four now. On your bike, uh, McMartin Racing doing a great job to uh, quickly adapt that machine for the Mildura missile this weekend yeah. in this tr very, very tricky condition. Look at how wet it is out there now. He is doing a sensational job out there. Just staying out of trouble. Did you see how wide he was there? Took the smooth part of the track compared to um, where Herfoss was. Uh, he's doing everything right. To be so consistent in these conditions is incredible. Carbon copy of what happened in race two last year as well, where he's completely dominant in the wet conditions. Remember, over the first couple of laps, he sat back, got his feel for the conditions. Then by about lap two or three, he put the hammer down and uh, rode away to a, a comfortable victory. He's done exactly the same thing in this one, except he was near the front for the entire race distance. He had the attentions of young Brock Pearson to deal with early on in the race, but now he holds a 3.9 second lead over young Brock Pearson, who's going to take a sensational podium aboard the Desmos Sport Ducati as uh, Waters comes out of the final corner and heads towards the finish line. He will be the round winner here this weekend with pole position, a second place, and also a race win. Josh Waters takes the 25 championship points on offer in the very tricky race number two for the Alpine Stars Superbike category. Brock Pearson takes another excellent podium. And Max Stofer, his second podium in the Alpine Stars Superbike category. The brand new RST leathers working well for him this weekend. Crew Halliday, a great recovery, takes fourth place. What a race that was, Phil. I've got to say some definite standouts Pearson okay Waters you can't knock that but uh, Pearson and um, Stauffer and Halliday great rides two uh, 3.6 seconds the eventual winning margin for Josh Waters and then those riders that you mentioned Steve Pearson Stauffer Halliday Harry Voigt well he's had a sensational weekend before he heads off overseas and best of luck to Harry in the World Moto 2 uh, Championships uh, the World Junior Championships I should say Brian Starring in 6th Arthur CC's a great ride in 7th and uh, Mike Jones uh, and Josh Sutherland rounded at the top 10 Chris Vermeulen is with our top 3 I mean what a super bike race the, the, the weather put it on for us didn't it but I'm really happy to speak to this young man Max Stofer congratulations what a result it's unreal. Like I can't, I can't believe it. Um, on the first lap, I reckon I was in, you know, 12th, 13th place. I couldn't believe how far back I was. Going through turn two, I was like, oh no, and I'm still losing positions. Um, but I just got heat in the tyres, and it felt good. Um, I struggled all weekend so much. I broke my wrist three weeks ago, and it's just been really, really hard. So to be here in the end, I'm stoked, and I can't thank the Penrite uh, Racing um, team enough. You did a fantastic job. Good luck at the next round. Great to see you here. Thank you. There you go, our third place man.
And another young fella. It's so good seeing these young guys do well when the conditions throw it at them. Brock Pearson, what a race. You led that one. Second place, congratulations. Yeah, it was a little bit daunting at the start on the slick tyres, but anyways, I just wanted to be the one to just hit the front and see where it's at. Um, I was so disappointed to see Troy crash at the start. I got so excited when we were first and second, but um, anyways, it's been 18 months for me on the bike, and um, I'm so happy I've finally given a podium to Ben and, and Ken specifically. They've been in my corner the whole time. Um, special shout out to Troy Bayless, who's probably watching from home or somewhere. Um, he really helped me get on this bike, so thank you. I wish you were here with me, but um, so glad to have half my family here and my friends, and I'm just so excited, and I, I really hope we can start clicking into some form. Well, congratulations. You deserve that one. Well done. Really good to see. Two young guys, but the experienced man, the championship leader, three times Australian Superbike champion. You showed your experience then. That worked for you, Josh. I think I was like everyone on the grid, didn't <laughs> want to be racing. And you remember from back when you were racing, it's not, it's not enjoyable weather like that, but same for everyone. I was able to go good. Uh, I was able to go good because of my team. They did an amazing job, gave me a great bike. So huge thank you to uh, McMartin Racing, all of our sponsors, all my personal sponsors and um, everyone that's supporting me. Well, congratulations again and good luck at the next round. Yeah, thanks heaps. I'll see you in a month. Congratulations to Josh Waters. He now leads the championship by an extended margin, 109 and a half points to Crew Halliday, who's moved up into second place on 84. Two points ahead of Harry Voigt, who heads off overseas after this round. Brock Pearson up into fourth. Mike Jones in fifth, tied with Cameron Dunker on 61 and a half points. Max Stope has moved up to seventh. Ant West in eighth. Brian Starring in ninth. And Troy Herfoss still rounds out the top ten, despite a DNS in race number one and a crash in race two. Glenn Allerton in 11th, Arthur CC's in 12th, Hardwick in 13th, Lichus in 14th, and Sondland rounds out that top 15. Now the next round, Steve, we haven't got long to wait, 26th to the 28th of April at Queensland Raceway. That is going to be absolutely fantastic. Last year, the racing there was sensational. I expect nothing less than we had there in one month's time. Of course, the next round of Pro MX is at Horsham on the 7th of April. Not too long to wait for that one either. And then we uh, head off to Gilman after that one in South Australia. But the best news is, that uh, with only four weeks or so to go, there's not long to wait until we head to Queensland. Your final thoughts on what has been a great round here at Sydney Motorsport Park. Well, this round never disappoints, does it? It's given us everything. A lot of uh, upset victories and um, a lot of upset losses, but uh, dry, wet. We've had everything here tonight. We've had daylight, we've had dark. Absolutely loved coming here, Phil. It's just a brilliant place to be. It certainly is, and a massive thank you once again to Destination New South Wales and the New South Wales Government for their support uh, to bring this event to the people of Sydney, making sure they get world-class motorcycle racing action here in Sydney. That's all from us here at Sydney Motorsport Park. We'll see you in Queensland. Queensland Raceway up next on the ASBK calendar.